you, Mark. So, so I'm going to talk to municipal governance and Lexington in particular. And, and first, let me tell you the secret to being successful at this. Bob, Mark, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> Lexington is blessed with a, a, a wide number of really um, um, great volunteers that contribute to the community. And Mark is among the, the top of that list. And he is not alone. Lisa, Judy, is in the audience, the number of other members of sustainable license are here. We would not be able to be doing what we are doing as a community without the degree of engagement we have from these wonderful residents. And I can't say none. Um, I also won't be speaking as fast. The, um, <laughs> uh, from a, from a uh, town government perspective, essentially we have three areas that we think about, or I think about. One is process, how do we go about doing things? The other is regulation, how do we go about making other people do things? And then end user, we are only 2% of, of buildings, but we are an end user and a, a, we look at what we do both as a model for uh, other sectors and to do well. So let's start with process. Um, being committed to climate action is something that's been dear my heart for a while. And town meeting joined us in that commitment in, in 2013 by passing a resolution requiring all town actions to take into account climate change. That's actually, you know, it sort of sounds touchy-feely good, you know, what, what is a resolution? Well, the reality is that we've taken it to heart. And when we look at projects, we turn around and say, so, what is the impact here? How do we think outside of the box a little bit and look at ways that we can do better for um, mitigation or adaptation and really think about the sustainability of what's going forward. So town meetings set the stage. Uh, the Board of Selectmen bought in, which is good. And, um, and an example of that is uh, earlier this year we went ahead and uh, declared our adherence to the Paris Climate Accord. And we signed on to the uh, Compact of Mayors as the first town in, in Massachusetts to say, yep, we are in. And we will work to establish our policy so that we are uh, uh, reducing greenhouse gas emissions and the like. Town meeting and, and the uh, executive board, the executive selectmen, created the Net Zero Task Force. We, out, we appropriated money to hire consultants and build a plan. You can't actually do things unless you measure what you have and have a plan and then execute it. That's what we're in the middle of right now. Part of that plan is public engagement. And it's not just a one-way conversation about what are we trying to do, but, but getting in the community to buy in and look at what they can do and give us guidance as to are you pushing too hard? Are you not pushing hard enough? So that's part of what we're looking for tonight, and it's not a one-time event. It's a continuing amount of engagement. As a community, we look at planning short-term, long-term, very long-term, all the time. And one of the things we're doing right now is revising our comprehensive plan, which is looking at what we want for ourselves as a community from land use regulations, uh, traffic management, this is going to be a two and a half year process, which is getting kicked off now. The work of this committee and the work of our sustainability initiatives are input into that comprehensive plan as we look at how does that realize itself in what you do for recreation, and what you do for laying out traffic management and buildings. So that begins to transition over to regulation. We look at local regulations, that's what we can implement here in town and the adopting the stretch code about a decade ago was an example of that um, and looking for creating new pieces now as a community we're part of a commonwealth we don't actually get to say oh the building code is going to be the, the commonwealth of massachusetts gets to say that but we do work with our state legislative delegation and we push and say let's advance our statewide laws and regulations to better accommodate our needs. And then there's national. 
So I already spoke about national, let's leave that alone. <laughs> um, you know, the only thing I will say is Mark mentioned that uh, if we have excluded Handsome Air Force Base and, and uh, uh, MIT Lincoln Labs. And the reason we do that is they are uh, both federal entities as far as their structure, and we have no influence. Uh, or, well, so, right. Yeah. We try, but, uh, but, but, but we are focusing on, as I said, measure what you are doing and then work at what you can do. Let's focus on the local pieces and then let's keep trying to get something going at the federal level. Um, the, um, some of the, the, the local pieces are, it's not just regulations, but it's a taking advantage of statewide programs. So adopting the Community Choice Aggregation Program that Mark mentioned both saves dollars for our residents and it reduces significantly greenhouse gas emissions. Commercial pace is another example as an incentive for our commercial sector to move forward more quickly. And we're constantly looking for those kinds of programs and working with our delegation to create some of those. As an end user, we have a number of buildings, vehicles, etc. So the sustainable building policy design was a stab, a first stab at this, uh, now almost a decade ago, and it's time to revise it. We have, we're close to being, uh, having a, a, an agreed upon revision, and elements that are in there are things like moving to all electric buildings, and the, the recent uh, large construction projects that were uh, approved in a debt exclusion vote on Monday, thank you all, um, are exactly that. They're buildings designed with sustainability issues in mind and are moving to uh, using more greener and healthier um, uh, electric and power systems. There's more we would like to do, but one of the things I've learned a while ago is be happy for what you can get and keep pushing. And it's good to actually have aspirations that are a little beyond. And you keep moving along. It's, it's okay if you don't always get everything. Um, but don't, you know, tomorrow keep coming back and ask for the next thing. Uh, we work on power purchase agreements, both for things like the, the uh, solar panels that we have on our municipal buildings and on the uh, Hartwell Avenue site, and for our competitive uh, arrangements for power we're purchasing for the town. We have deployed a, a reasonable amount of renewable energy. I think it's about 45% of what the town consumes as a municipal entity is coming from solar panels on our buildings and at our Avenue site. Uh, this is saving the town on the order of $450,000 to $500,000 a year in avoided expenses for electricity charges. So it's not only good for the environment, it's good for our bottom line. Um, and, and we're looking at these things not just for power production, but we're looking at moving toward quieter emissions-free equipment in, in our lawn care for DPW and our vehicles. Um, DPW it has purchased a number of uh, lawn mowers and uh, leaf blowers that are electric powered, and, and part of that is because we want to be good citizens on, on greenhouse gas emissions. Part of it is because we want to be good citizens with respect to abutters and neighbors and, and use lower noise production. So there's a lot we can do. Um, there's going to be more, and I count on you to keep us honest. Thank you.